guys, CP Mod here, back with another video, and today we're here with our old i7-980X, which made up our benchmarking rig that we've been using really up until very recently, when we got ourselves the i7-5820K. But it really got me thinking, is there that much of a difference between the original i7 Extreme Edition versus a non-Extreme Edition just K part of an Enthusiast Class platform? Today, we're going to go ahead and put that to the test. Now, both of these chips are, on paper, fairly similar, but also to fairly different. Both feature 6 cores and 12 threads and a fairly similar clock speed and well that's kind of it, they're not really that much the same. The older i7-980X runs at a clock speed of 3.3 GHz with a boost of up to 3.6 GHz and can support 24GB of DDR3 RAM. It's also too built on the 32 nanometer process and it uses the socket 1366 which back in its day was a fairly beefy socket and this is well one fairly decent little chip. On top of that the overclocks are fairly good and we'll get to that later on in the videos. I actually managed to get this running at 4.7 GHz hurts happily with no problems there. Now with the newer 5820K we're running at 3.3 gigahertz this time so 0 .3, uh, 0 0.03 in fact of a gigahertz slower with a 3.6 gigahertz boost so almost the same but still once again a little bit different. We also to get up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM this time supported with this processor and it's built on the 22 nanometer architecture using socket 2011-3 and the X99 chipset which is on this particular motherboard here today. So on paper they're kind of the same but also two kind of different with similar clock speeds and similar core counts what really sets them apart and well we'll get into actually figuring out what sets them apart and we'll start off with some benchmarking. Now we start off with our synthetic test to really see what the CPUs could do if we were just testing the CPUs and then we'll get into some more real world things. Now because both of these chips don't feature any iGPU we couldn't exactly run the GPUs that came standard with them so we grabbed ourselves a GTX 980 reference card and used that for testing. Testing. We use the Gigabyte X99 UD3 motherboard right here for the 2011 chip and an ASUS one for our 1366 CPU. Both of them were kitted out with 16 gigabytes of RAM. We got 16 gigs of DDR4 in our higher end X99 chip and we also too got ourselves 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM in our little 1366 motherboard. And with that being said, let's get into our testing. So for synthetics, we started off with Cinebench R10. Both multi-core and single core was dominated by the newer 5820K and this kind of just continues on. Jumping into PC Mark and Geekbench we once again saw the same story of the newer 5820K beating out the older 980X. Jumping into some games it wasn't as obvious which chip we were running but there was a slight but a little bit noticeable difference. It wasn't the difference of night and day but you could generally tell a little bit that each chip was either newer or older. But with that being said games are more sensitive to GPU changes rather than the CPU changes and because these are both super super high-end chips with 6 processing cores and 12 logical ones we're not really running into any bottlenecks. Running super high-end hardware like 980 Ti's, 980's, even in SLI and those kind of things, we're not going to be bottlenecked even by the older 980X chips. So, we're not really running into any bottlenecks here, so games aren't going to be able to take really that much of advantage because, well, they're high-end chips, so there we go. Overall, the 980X is actually still a fairly good chip, and for what it is, it's, well, still holding up pretty well. Being over five years old at this point, it's handling the jobs that we're throwing at it today, just as well as what we did back when this chip launched. Comparing it to the i7-5820K, it's sort of on par when it comes to most daytime jobs. Overclocking though was a different story. We grabbed ourselves the H55 from Corsair to represent a lower end type of cooling where someone isn't going to be dropping hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a cooling solution or someone who's using an air cooler as we found in this video up here. They perform roughly the same as each other, so we kind of figured that there. We went ahead and overclocked and I managed to once again achieve about a four and a half to almost 4.6 gigahertz overclock on the 980X and we got ourselves just under four and a half on the i7-5820K. I also did note that overclocking the 980X was a lot easier than just going ahead and trying to do the same thing on the 5820K. This might be down to a few reasons. First being that this is an extreme edition chip, meaning that the binning cycle for this is going to be a lot better than something like the 5820K where it's a lower skew of chip. If we compare this extreme edition to the latest extreme edition, the 5960, 
DX, we probably would be seeing the same ease of overclocking, but I just found that my 5820K had a little bit trouble trying to get past that 4 gigahertz boundary, but once we did sort of dial in the settings, they were both roughly the same, running at the same speed. So the question is, should you be moving from the 980X to the 5820K? Well, moving over to the newer chip, you're still getting 12 threads and 6 cores, so you're not really benefiting there in the core department, and the speeds are running just about the same. Though it is a 5 year gap between the two, there's not exactly that much I would say is a really value to going ahead and getting rid of the motherboard, the RAM and the CPU just to get yourself basically the same thing. We're still getting the same cores, we need to then go ahead and get a new motherboard if we're swapping out the CPU and get yourself new RAM because well, there's no DDR3 support on the X99 platform. So I guess that does bring it down. If you really need the more RAM or more PCI Express lanes or something along those lines that the newer chip offers, then yeah, it might be of value for you. But if you don't really need it and you're just looking for more performance, go ahead and put that money into a better GPU or another GPU because you're not really going to see the biggest difference between the sort of more original Extreme Edition versus what we have here today. Guys, like or dislike the video accordingly, let me know what you guys would go for. Would you go for the 980X and overclock that thing with a big water cooler or would you go for the 5820K and overclock that with a big water cooler, seeing that to go ahead and buy the chips and the motherboards and the RAM, you're going to be looking at about roughly the same cost as this still is a fairly expensive chip to go ahead and buy even five years later. Thanks for watching, give us a sub if you like what we're doing and I'll see you all next time for another video.